Omoso? Oh, okay, can mom come up? <laughs> Sister, anybody can come up. Hallelujah. Congratulations, mom. <laughs> and we have Jamar Rockwell. But not least, Kim H. Sullivan. Yeah. Hallelujah. There are sign up sheets also on the back table. We will be having another baptism service on May 19th. I believe that's the third Sunday. In, I'm sorry, not May. Yes, May. <laughs> the third Sunday because there's a lot of other people who want to be water baptized. So if you're interested, please sign up on the back table. At this time, what I'd like to do is call up the missions team so that as a church we can pray over them. So Pastor Carlos, Brother Mark, Brother Tim, Brother Gino, Brother Chuck, if you can come on up and we can give a prayer over you. Hallelujah. Missions is such an important thing to spread the gospel. Hallelujah. And these are the men that God raised up to go out and minister to the Philippines. They will be leaving this Thursday, May 4th. They will return on May 16th, except for Brother Mark, who will be there extended for a few months, right? Uh, three months. So please keep them all in prayer. And we're very excited what God is going to be doing because they have... They're going to be ministered to about 150 to 200 pastors, the message of only Christ, only grace. They will have crusades to win souls to the kingdom. And it's a wonderful time for Jesus. Amen? Amen. So if you can reach out your hands today as Pastor Rodney anoints them in oil and Sister Yachio and Brother Clayton lays hands on them. We just thank you, Lord, right now for this team that you have put together, Lord. It is your vision, Lord, that, that we fulfill, Lord, that you will do through us, O oh God. We thank you for Christ who dwells in each and every one of them. And Lord, it is not human flesh that will go out to minister, but it was it is you, Christ, to them, Lord, who will preach the gospel, Lord, who will shine the light into the darkness, O oh God. Right now, we bind the powers of darkness right now in Jesus' name, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord, that your gospel will just flow freely through them, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you have already prepared the field, Lord. You are touching the hearts of those in the Philippines, Lord, that you are calling back unto yourselves, Lord. So we just thank you, Lord, for those that you have chosen, Lord, to to. Open their hearts, Lord, to open their ears, Lord, to hear the gospel. So, Lord, we thank you for your outpouring of grace, your outpouring, Lord, continuously, 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 Lord, upon the, that area in the Philippines, upon these men that you are sending out in your righteousness, Lord. And we await, Lord, we await the good news of the souls and the hearts that are changed, Lord, through the gospel of Christ, through the gospel of grace, oh God. And we thank you that you are with them, in them, and you will provide the protection, Lord, that is needed for them out there, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that, that whatever they eat, whatever they drink, no harm will come to them, Lord, because you are their preservation, and you are always with them. So we thank you, Lord, that you sending them, you are the one sending them to the Philippines, Lord, to do your mighty work, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said a mission sent. Amen. 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 Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anointing. So what we're going to do is their itinerary, um, day by day itinerary will be placed on the back table. So if you could just take their itinerary as you go in prayer each day, please pray. Uh, the moving of the Holy Spirit upon them, the moving of Christ. Amen? Yes. At this time, we'd like to call up our own Pastor Carlos Rodriguez. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me try that again. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is a true um, privilege and an honor to deliver this message this morning. As we really know that life and the gospel... It's really being drilled in our hearts fervently that it's not about us. Praise the Lord. The new covenant was made with Jesus on our behalf. Our role as believers in Jesus Christ is to enjoy the life that has been freely given to us which lives in our spirit, his name is Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. And when we enjoy him in, in our consciousness, when we're conscious of him in us, and begin to enjoy his life that lives in us, we like to call that the Emmanuel blessing. Praise the Lord. That the Lord is always with us and he loves us. For his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is God with us. God is with us, saints. And that's not just a saying or a quote. It's not just a bumper sticker. It's a reality. It's a spiritual reality. The Lord is with us. And when you know that the Lord is with you, and when you know that the Lord is for you, and when you know that the Lord has sacrificed his life on our behalf and all that he has given to us he gives us freely by his grace because the price has been paid 2,000 years ago when you think about the Lord and how powerful the magnitude of his love is in us it, it will transform your life and remember emotionalism is is um, acting emotional without, in the absence of truth. When you're being emotional because of a feeling or because everyone else is emotional, so you're jumping in. But the transformation of the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ is not emotionalism. Amen. It's a, it's a re response to the truth that of the gospel of Jesus Christ that in him, by his grace, he has made me altogether a different kind of person, a new creation. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Somebody say, all things. All things. Hallelujah. And when the Bible says all things, it means all things. Praise the Lord. Remember, the scriptures are truth. We, we lie to ourselves all the time in the flesh. But the scriptures and the Lord is the truth that lives in us. Praise the Lord. When I say that we lie, what we mean is when we use the word all the time or all things, we exaggerate. You know, like for example, praise God. If you forget to put the dirty cup... You know, um, if you forget to wash it and you leave one cup in the sink, 
Praise God. Someone will tell you, you always do that. <laughs> Praise God. And you know, you just did it that one time, or maybe a couple other times, but, but the word always is exaggerated because you don't always do that. You know, maybe you did do that sometimes. But when the scripture says, I am always with you, that's no exaggeration. When the Lord says, I am always with you, the word always means always. He's always with you. There's never a moment in your life that he's not with you. There's never a breath that you take that he's not on your side. There's never a moment, a second in your life that God's grace has not favored you to be in that moment. Praise the Lord. The substitutionary death of Jesus paved the way for God's grace to come in and qualify me as God's earthen vessel. The title of the message this morning, we're continuing from last week, the Ministry of Reconciliation, Part 2. Praise the Lord. And we want to thank the Lord for, praise the Lord, giving us His life. And in giving us His life, He has reconciled us to to God, in whom we have been separated from birth, praise the Lord. The moment we were born, we were God's enemy. We were blind. We were in darkness. We were in total depravity because of the, the nature of Adam that has been transferred into our very bloodline, the Adamic nature. We were born totally depraved of God. The scripture says, I was dead in trespasses in sin. Yet by the grace of God, he has made me alive by his grace and given me spiritual eyes to see, spiritual ears to hear, and a spiritual heart to perceive that God loves me. And you know, the Bible says that in the day of salvation, I have helped you. That's the born again experience when God helps you to realize how much God loves you. That's when we become born again. And unless we are born again, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is the door in which we enter the kingdom of heaven. But you see, we need to be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. But we cannot be privileged to be God's earthen vessel. Let's turn once again like we did last week to 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21. We're continuing in the message of reconciliation. Praise the Lord. And let's continue to allow these scriptures... To be drilled into our hearts, praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5.18 declares, Now all things, there's that word again, all things. Somebody all. say all things. All. Praise God. All things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We're going to talk about that today. That Jesus has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That means God is going to use you as his earthen vessel, as his instrument to reconcile his elect back to himself. Hallelujah. To reconcile those whom he have predestined before the foundation of the world to return home and come back to him. Hallelujah. The lost sheep, and God knows who they are. He will bring them in your path, and then God will give you a ministry of reconciliation because Jesus lives in you and we are his instruments. And that makes life exciting. Hallelujah. Verse 19. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Praise the Lord. God has committed to us his word of reconciliation. Reconciliation is God's promise to us. Praise the Lord. And remember, the, the word rec reconcili reconciliation means that through the substitutionary death of Jesus, we now have peace with God. The, the sacrificial life of Christ, he became the bridge that brought me reconnected me to my heavenly father and I, I used to be um, enemies of God 
Through reconciliation, I now have peace with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the peace of God, remember, passes understanding. The world cannot understand it. The world cannot um, um, experience it except through the life of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And that's what's going to happen everywhere you go. It's as though God is pleading through you, his instruments. Pleading to those who, whose heart he has prepared to come to him. Pleading through you to them that they also may be reconciled to God. That's the gospel flowing through you into, praise the Lord, God's, God's people. Hallelujah. Those who belong to him. Praise those whose hearts he is preparing to come to him. And God is in control. He's the one that prepares a heart to come to him. Praise God. That's why evangelism is, is the work of God. He does it. Hallelujah. He prepares the heart. He opens the spirit. And he uses us as instruments to bring them in. Hallelujah. Verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Praise the Lord. And that's what we are in Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And that righteousness is not dependent on my obedience. That righteousness depends on the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's the, it's the substitutionary punishment that Jesus took on my behalf that gave me a right to be called God's child and gave me the privilege to stand as a righteous saint of God before, before God. Hallelujah. And you know what? Because Jesus lives in me, that's why I'm righteous. Because I'm in Christ, that's why I'm... It's His righteousness that has been given to me as a free gift. I didn't earn it. Praise the Lord. I'm qualified because of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it's important that we understand this. Or we're going to fall into the trap of religion, thinking that we need to earn our righteousness, even through religious activity. And the enemy can be really cunning. The enemy can even use the Bible as a religious activity to make you believe that unless you're reading the Bible, you will not have God's favor. You will not have God's love. You will not have... Um, you know, God's blessing upon your life. And then he's going to bring us to a point of religion, even using prayer. You're not praying enough. You know, that's why God's favor is not upon your life. Oh, you miss a couple of um, church services. So that's why God's, you see, the enemy can even cause um, the, the thing that is so pure that supposed, it, in God's intention, the word of God is supposed to bring us into a relationship with him. Him revealing his love to us through his word. Instead, the enemy want to make a religion out of this word. Instead of a relationship with God through his word. By, by God's grace, grace always brings us into a relationship with God. Yeah. Whereby the word of God is revealed to us. And, and when God's grace is upon our life, we're going to enjoy his word. We're going to come to his word because we want to enjoy Christ. We pray because we want to enjoy Christ. We come to the house of the Lord to enjoy Christ. But our righteousness is settled. Praise God. Who we are in Christ has been decided 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on my behalf. So I don't read the Bible to become righteous. I'm righteous, therefore now I want to read the Bible. I don't come to church to become righteous. I am righteous, therefore now... Because the righteousness of God in me, now I long to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. You see, there's a, one is grace, one is religion. Praise the Lord. You see, I don't pray to become righteous or to earn God's favor. God's favor has been freely given to me in Christ. Now prayer is something that happens as a result of me being reconciled to God. You see, prayer is a result of Jesus living in me. That everywhere I go, I'm praying because Jesus is always with me. And communication with, with the Lord is always there. Everywhere I go, he's with me. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why the, the message of the 
Emmanuel blessing is so powerful. Praise the Lord. We think that God is only with us when we need him in religion. Or we think that God is only with us when, when we're in religious prayer. In other words, in my mind, if I think, okay, every morning I wake up and I pray from 6 to 8. So that's when God is with me. That's when I'm praying. But that's not the Emmanuel blessing. That's, that's good to do that. If God allows you to enjoy a quiet time with him from 6 to 8, that's wonderful. But that does not base his love for you because you did that for two hours. You understand? You see, God already loves you. And if you have that two hours with him, that's, that's a privilege. Hallelujah. But that's not the reason why God loves you. He loves you because he is love and he sent his only son to be a propitiation for our sins. That's why he loves you. He loves you because Jesus lives in you. He loves you because Jesus paid the price. He loves you because Jesus gave, gave us access to enter into this love. And Jesus gave God access for God to enter into my spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus is the bridge, the mediator between God and man. That's why God loves me. He doesn't love me because of anything I do. But you see, all of these things happen naturally when we have the revelation that God loves me with an everlasting love. Praise God. And it ain't based on my obedience. Hallelujah. We need to make it so clear, praise God, that God loves me. That God loves me. That God loves me separate than what I do. God loves me not because of what I do. He loves me in spite of what I do. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. That's grace. Hallelujah. That's grace. Praise God. Remember um, Romans 6.14 says that we are no longer under the law but under grace. For sin shall no longer have dominion over you because we're under grace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Better get back to my notes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just as God was in Christ, receiving me back to my Heavenly Father, reconciling me back to my Heavenly Father, Jesus now lives in us, reconciling His elect back to Himself. You know, in Mark 15, 34, when Jesus cried out, he cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Many believe that it is in that very moment when he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that was the very moment when everything I did wrong was placed upon his, his body. He became guilty of everything I did wrong. That's why God had to forsake his son for a moment that I could be accepted by God in all eternity. God became sin for a moment that I may become a saint in all eternity. God refused his son for a moment that he could receive me into all eternity. You see, God says, I love you so much that I'd rather die than live without you. Praise God. Jesus came to rescue us. Rescue us out of the pit that we were put into by Adam. Praise God. Uncle Adam, hallelujah. We're going to have a talk with him when we get to heaven. Praise God. But God knew, God knew that Adam would fall before he fell. And God, and we're no different than Adam, praise God. We eat of the fruit of the flesh every day ourselves, hallelujah. We're no, we're no better than Adam. If you was in the garden, you would have you would ate of the fruit also, hallelujah. Praise God. How many times I, I ate of things I'm not supposed to have eaten of, hallelujah. Come on now. I'm Adam hundred times over over here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. If I was in the garden, it would have been, you know, the tree of L and L, you know. <laughs> Praise God. You can eat of all the restaurants, but that chicken katsu in the middle, you 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 cannot touch that one. Praise God. I would have been over there. Oh. <laughs> We're no different. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. But because of Adam, we received the Adamic nature. Because of Christ, we've been reconciled to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Because of the freedom he has given us, we can enjoy Christ. We can have a good laugh. 
We can enjoy one another. It's because the ministry of reconciliation is happening inside of us. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. You see, on the cross, when Jesus died, he became, he became my sin. And I became his righteousness. Righteousness is a gift. Hallelujah. And now, the life that we live, Praise God. God is not improving my life. He removed my life. Praise God. Someone say remove, remove. not improve. Not improve. Not Hallelujah. Religion wants you to believe that God is polishing your performance for him. Grace says it has nothing to do with you. You've been crucified on the cross. On the cross with Christ. We need a only God's grace can give us a clear understanding between religion and grace. Hallelujah. But as we're learning to enjoy Christ who lives in us, our spiritual eyes are being more and more enlightened in the truth of who's doing the living. Praise the Lord. As reconciled children of God, we have the privilege of housing the life of Christ in us for the purpose that the original life of Jesus would now flow through us. Remember Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. That line is a, one of the most powerful lines in the New Testament. It is no longer I who live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. Yes. Praise God. If you just meditate upon that all day, yes. you would get an explosion of God's grace. Yes. Because it is no longer I who live. Hallelujah. If we could just learn that, we would be in good shape. Praise God. Stop trying to live the Christian life. Rest in the finished work. And understand that Jesus is the only one qualified to live the Christian life. And he has chosen us as his earthen vessel that he would live the Christian life through. Hallelujah. And this is why we need to be taught right. This is why we need to preach right. This is why we need to have uh, the understanding that we're going to see in, later on in Romans 5 that we could enter this grace, hallelujah, that's available to us, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, hallelujah. The life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. This is a powerful verse. If you memorize a verse, memorize Galatians 2.20, hallelujah. The life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. And even that faith that you have is by God's grace, hallelujah. You cannot believe without God's grace. I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me. Number one, that's the magnitude of God's love for me. He will always give you a revelation of how much God loves you. And that's the role of the Holy Spirit, to show you how much God loves you. And I thank God for the role of the Holy Spirit. Always showing me how much God loves me. As Paul said, he loves me. And number two, he gave himself for me. That's the gospel. That, and, you know, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose the third day according to the scriptures. That's why Paul said he loves me and he gave himself for me. He loves me. The Holy Spirit is showing me how much he loves me. He gave himself for me. That's the power of the gospel in operation in my life. And that's what he says, that the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith under the ministry of those two truths. Number one, he loves me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He loves me. Yes. And he gave himself for me. Yes. Him giving himself for me is the evidence that he loves me. Yes. Praise God. So him loving me is not an empty love. It's a love that is wrapped up in the sacrificial life and death of Jesus Christ. He was died according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Paul said the revelation of those two truths is what will carry me through this life. Those two truths, I will be crucified to realize those two truths. I've been crucified with Christ. No longer I who live so that I could realize those two. two, 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 two hallelujah. I could realize those two truths. 
Number one, that he loves me. Number two, that he gave his life for me. You know, I'm preaching now, and right now, you may not feel the full effect of what's being said. But there's a consciousness that as I speak, it's not me speaking, it's the Lord speaking through me. These are words that came from heaven. Praise God. These are words that came from the Lord. And so what happens is, is you may hear this now, and, and praise God, there may not be an effect on you right now, but some of you are going to be driving, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Some of you are going to be driving. And while you're driving, God's Holy Spirit is just going to start messing with you. Hallelujah. He's just going to start showing you, number one, how much God loves you. He's going to show it to you and your children. He's going to show it to you and your spouse. He's going to show it to you maybe even a movie you've seen. Praise God. Even though you, you, um, you lied and you told your wife you're going to the, you're going to do something else, but you really would sneak out and watch a movie. Praise God. You'd be amazed. Praise God. God's amazing grace. Can even take all of your mistakes, even all your filthiness, all your lies, all your wrongs. And you can even go sneak out and watch that movie, hallelujah. And even in that movie, God can show you his amazing grace. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We cannot run from God's grace. That's the new covenant, hallelujah. In the Old Testament, all of our sins is calculated against us. In the new covenant, all of our sins are washed away in the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no record. There is no record. The, the blood, the pages that had a record of wrongs has been stained by the blood of Jesus. Because the pages is blood stained, it can no longer be seen. It's not white out that took away the written sins that I committed. It's red out, hallelujah. God used the red out to wipe out all my sins with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, I don't know where that came from. Hallelujah. <laughs> but that's good stuff. Hallelujah. Praise God. Legalism is a system of living in which we try to make spiritual progress or gain God's blessings based on what we do. Grace is yielding to the life of Christ in us, allowing his leading hand to turn every page in my life. That's grace, where his leading hand is turning every page in my life. That's God's sovereign grace, hallelujah. Remember, the good news to the unbeliever is you don't have to die, hallelujah. But you know what? There's good news for the believer, praise God. You don't have to live, hallelujah. You don't have to live anymore. You don't have to try and please God for he's already pleased in Christ. You don't have to try and impress God. He's already impressed with the cross. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you really think he was really impressing God with, with how much he was reading the Bible? And how much, really think about it. The creator of the universe and you will be saying, wow, I prayed five hours. Hallelujah. I must be more spiritual than everybody else. You can imagine. You can imagine that. When the... When, the Emmanuel blessing is 24-7. God don't want you to only be counted for prayer for five hours. When God's grace, you're always praying, hallelujah. 24-7 prayer is being accounted to you, hallelujah. The righteousness of God is being accounted to you, 24-7. The blood of Jesus is accounted to you, 24-7. Not only 6 to 8, not only when you eat, not only when you sleep. Praise God. That's God's grace, hallelujah. Praise God. Someone told me this week that I was, they see, when they see me, they see, they see passion, hallelujah. I think I see what they're talking about, hallelujah. Praise God. We all think that we all have our own assessment of ourselves, but praise God. What really matters, praise God is that Christ lives in us. Amen. And he will take your personality, whether, well, whatever it is, whether it be quiet or loud or, 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 or it seems like humble, but, but even humility can be pride if it's in the flesh. Yeah. Praise God. Oh, I'm so humble. Hallelujah. That's all pride. Hallelujah. Come on now. Wake up out of our sleep and recognize that we're in Christ. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. That's true humility is abiding in Christ. We have no humility apart from Christ. Our human love can only go so far. Like I said, eventually the flesh will be exposed. And our wives has a wonderful way of allowing that flesh to be exposed. And if your wife won't do it, your sister surely will. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if your sister don't, we always have Pastor Cynthia. It's praise God. There's always God's earthen vessel letting us know that if we're not in the spirit, we're in the flesh because our flesh gets exposed. And God uses his earthen vessels to prowl that exposure of our flesh so that we could realize, praise God, that I need to be conscious of Christ. It's not about me. Hallelujah. But we love. Hallelujah. We, I don't have the ability to love you. That's why now I can start loving you because I realize that. You see, I realize I don't have the ability to love you, so I'm going to run to Jesus. And when I run to Jesus, now his love is going to flow through me. And he's going to start loving you through me. You see the difference? You need to realize that you cannot love your spouse the way that God intended you to. But he can love her through you. And that's the love that will transform your marriage. You don't have the agape love in your human ability to love, to love your children. And you wonder why they're not being transformed. And you're trying to transform them by giving them more laws and more laws and being more strict. Hallelujah. And you think that, oh, if I was to lay a harder law on them, surely they would, surely they would change and be transformed. But their heart is just growing more and more apart from you and against you because the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Hallelujah. All right. When you're abiding in Christ, his agape, unconditional love starts flowing through you. And that's when your children will be transformed in that love because you're no longer abiding in them. You're abiding in Christ and his love takes over and begins to abide in them through you. You see, God's love can, can transform into a love where a father loves his son, but it's God's love. A husband loves his wife, but it's God's love. You know, even loving one another is the love of God. This happens through abiding in Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. If the devil can't make you feel guilty by doing bad things, he'll try and make you feel condemned by doing too much good things. If he cannot tell you to do something bad, he'll tell you to do something good, but, but remind you that you're not good enough. And then put you under a weight of condemnation. Praise the Lord. Only Christ can live the Christian life. And only he is qualified to make God happy. That's why when God looked at Jesus, he said, this is my beloved son in him. I am well pleased. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a transforming gospel. Praise the Lord. With our own eyes, we are witnessing the power and the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. We are hearing so many testimonies of how God's amazing grace and unconditional love is literally transforming so many lives. Praise the Lord. Even here in our own church at Faith, Hope, and Love Christian Center. Hallelujah. You know, the, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And, and his grace toward me is not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was in me. We can see the transforming power of reconciliation working in our hearts and in our lives. And even in our, in our, um, in our Bible studies, it's so evident in our Wednesday night Bible studies of in our life just speaking with people that when we fellowship with one another we can see God's grace working in our lives praise the Lord even the impact ministry you can see God's grace working in them hallelujah transforming their lives hallelujah he's transforming us pastors pastor Cynthia pastor Rodney myself he's transforming us in his love and in his grace and it is his love that flows from us um, into one another. Hallelujah. That's the power of reconciliation. In just one minute, praise God, I'd like to call up Sister Letty um, Nakamura um, just to share, just for two minutes, praise God. 
the power of God's grace working in her life. Come on, Sister Lady. God bless you. Hallelujah. This is not putting her on the spot, praise God. Um, but, but I told her that I would ask her to share from her heart because God has transformed this woman in his love and in his grace. Let's take a minute to share God's love. God bless you. Pastor Carlos um, told me, you don't have to write anything, you know, just uh, speak from your heart, let the Holy Spirit flow, but I couldn't help it because all of these thoughts were coming to my mind, and I was getting so nervous, and I thought I would end up just rambling, so I did have to um, put my thoughts on paper, and Pastor Carlos, I assure you, the Holy Spirit, for me, speaks through my pen. I, 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 love, I love to write. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my grace journey, which actually started at um, the Gospel Talk on Wednesday nights. Actually, for many years, I would just be exercising on Wednesday night at the Family Wellness Center, and I would see this group of church people coming in, and they would be gathering, and um, to be honest with you, I used to think they were kind of mysterious, <laughs> because I had heard that their message was a bit different. But one Wednesday night, my dear friend and exercise partner Lucy, you all know Lucy, she told me she was going to sit in with these people. <laughs> and um, the reason she was going to do that is because Sister Lucille Quinones uh, had just moved to the mainland and Lucy wanted to stand in the gap for her on the very first Wednesday that she was not going to be there. And because I'm Lucy's friend, I figure it's her first night, I want to support her. You know, so I th I'm thinking, you know, I'm doing her a favor, but of course this was all part of God's plan. And after um, the session was over, I thought to myself, wow, that was, that was pretty good. It's not that weird. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to justify to myself why I could not be a part of this group. First of all, I had my own church. I was already going to another Bible study. I had exercises, I had activities. I had something, my calendar was full, so full, I, I couldn't add one more activity you know, to my schedule. But come Wednesday, exactly one week, I can just feel this rumbling inside of me and it's, it wasn't my stomach. <laughs> it was my spirit yearning to hear more of this crazy, crazy grace message. And I really tried to fight this nudging. My flesh says you don't have time. But this nudging became a burning and I, I couldn't deny it, you know. I knew it was the Holy Spirit, and I just said, God, I know you're doing something. And so, being obedient, I went to my second gospel talk, my second GT, and I've never missed one since then. <laughs> and that was seven months ago. But before attending Faith, Hope, and Love, um, I came from a fairly large church, uh, over 1,200 people. And when you have a lot of people, there are a lot of resources. So there were a buffet of classes and seminars and um, all kinds of things. And what I would do is, for 12 years, I would avail myself to all of these you know, classes and and um, retreat, 
because I really wanted to have a deeper relationship with the Lord. And I found after these sessions, there would be a sense of euphoria, but eventually it would fade away. And I thought, something must be wrong with me, or maybe God is just displeased with me, maybe both. And so I try again. I go to another class, another retreat. And I was just trying to find that missing link to find my real God connection. But I can say now that after attending our gospel talks and coming to this church, God showed me that the missing link, the missing link was just the consciousness of him all the time and the revelation of his radical grace. And knowing this and the awareness of God's abundant love, which Pastor Carlos always says, we have not even scratched the surface. These were the keys that just unlocked the floodgates of what was here. And it just opened it up and it just filled my heart. My head knowledge became so alive in my heart when I experienced for the very first time spirit speaking to spirit. It was the consciousness of Jesus being in me and through me, through me and just flowing, just flowing from me. Had I been in religious bondage? That's another chapter. <laughs> but, you know, just for now, I just want to also add that um, there is a wonderful anointing of the, the worship team um, that just unlocked another facet of me. You know, there was so much praise in me that had been suppressed. And so I just, you know, want to thank the, the praise team for, for releasing that, helping me to release it. Um, and now there is such an incredible, incredible freedom of being a Christian because chains have truly been torn. And I live in, in the joy that I had read about and that I had heard about. And you know, this joy, this joy has not faded away because I have finally found that there is rest in him. And when Jesus said, it is finished, I know for all of us here, it's just beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Praise God. That's God's radical grace working in our lives. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. The power of reconciliation not only reconciles unbelievers back to God, but praise God, but it reconciles believers that have been caught in religion for so many years back to the heart of God. And it reconciles families back to one another. We, we have seen um, just two weeks ago, as, as Pastor Rodney had, had administered a wedding right here in our church, a small little wedding, the power of reconciliation. As a good friend of mine named Lawrence, he, he became completely blind. Physically blind, totally physically blind. And I know, and we know of his life, all the drugs and all of the pain and all the scars in his life. Um, his, his, his relationship with his dad was terrible. His relationship, you know, uh, with his fiance was terrible. His relationship with the ch children was terrible. And he's running around the streets just totally lost. And then he became blind. So hard, hard to walk, run around on the streets when you're blind. Hallelujah. So, so what had happened was, in his blindness, he received spiritual eyes. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
and the and the God's grace came upon him and radically changed this man named Lawrence. Hallelujah. And and now when I speak to him, praise God, he called me out of the blues, and I and, and the gospel of Jesus Christ was just flowing through him. But at his wedding, his dad came, his natural father, whom he whom he had um, no relationship with, and to see them embrace each other in tears. Hallelujah. And, and, and hearing Lawrence say to his dad, it is because of the grace of God that I can hug you right now. It is because of God's love in, in my life that he has brought you back into my life. To see the power of reconciliation, bringing families back, back together. Hallelujah. That was torn apart, not only in sin, but in religion. This is the power of the gospel. Praise the Lord. It's bringing believers out of religion into his unconditional love is bringing unbelievers out of sin into the marvelous light. Is bringing families that's been separated for years back in unity again. Is bringing churches together. Hallelujah. Praise God. Even the enemy has used religion to wedge churches to divide and have separation over issues that's not even important. But God's grace breaks down the walls. Hallelujah. And we all unite in God's love and we realize that we're so much better together in grace than we are apart in religion. Amen. Hallelujah. Only God's grace can do that. Amen. Praise God. Let's give him a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Rodney, if you can come up, we're, we're going to be wrapping up this message. We, we had so much more to share on notes, but when Jesus takes over, you never know how the message is going to go. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Um, if I was... Um, it's not up to me what's said, praise the Lord. It's the Lord who speaks through us. And we come bare before him, knowing that only he has the supply of transformation for the congregation every week. Hallelujah. And, and, and every time, praise the Lord, the, the pulpit message is brought forth, there is an anticipation of, of transformation because of God's amazing love. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it really is. It really is that love, hallelujah, transforming lives, opening our eyes to see. Praise the Lord. I see Brother Bob Haas hiding back over there in the corner, hallelujah. We love you, Brother Bob, hallelujah. Bob was fellowshipping with me the other day, and um, he has a, 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 a co-laborer in the military, a friend in the military, who's an, who's an atheist in his belief. And... Uh, Lately, he's been really expressing his disbelief in God through Facebook. And it, it kind of grabbed the heart of Brother Bob, being a believer in Jesus Christ. And Bob, you know, um, noticed that one of the questions he had asked was, how can you guys believe in a God in whom you have not seen? How can you prove the existence of God? And that question that that friend of his exposed, Bothered, bothered Bob in a sense where he took it in prayer. Praise the Lord. When Bob came here on the Impact Ministry Friday night, hallelujah. As he was praying and, and just resting in Christ, the Lord began to answer his question. And what had happened was Brother Rob Maoga, hallelujah, who had walked by the church with this big, hallelujah, smile on his face, just... Just walking around, you know, hallelujah. And, and Brother Bob noticed that. And the Lord spoke to his heart and said, You know that I'm alive and you know that I exist. You see me all the time. And when he was looking at Rob, Bob realized through a, a revelation of God's spirit that Jesus lives in Rob. And that big smile on his face is an expression of God's love flowing through Brother Rob. Then he said he looked at Pastor Rod and he saw a big smile on his face and he saw an expression of God's love flowing through Pastor Rodney, praise God. Then, then, then he saw a, an expression of God flowing through all of the youth and he began, to, he began to weep in this revelation that I see God everywhere I go. He lives in the hearts of those who believe in him. And he expresses his life through those 
who abide in him. And we who have the same experience can see God so clearly, the life of Christ in one another. This is the ministry of reconciliation. It can only be seen by those who believe. This is why God is pleading through us. Be reconciled to God. You will see things that you've never seen before. You will do things that you've never done before. You will go places that you've never been before. You will have experiences that you never experienced before. Because the ministry of reconciliation lives in you. Because Jesus lives in you. And he's reconciling the world to himself. And he's pleading through you. Pleading through you. What does the scripture say? He's pleading through you. Be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. He loves you so much. He'd rather die than live without you. And he has placed his life in you. And we can clearly see the life of Christ in one another. Because when we see you, we see Christ. That can only be seen through spiritual eyes. And the ministry of reconciliation, the power of God's grace, gives us spiritual eyes. There was so much more that we have prepared to share with you. But we're going to wrap it up because everything that the Lord had prepared to bring out has been brought up. So receive it with God's grace. Know that you are God's earthen vessel. Know that you are an instrument in righteousness. And know that righteousness is a gift. I implore of you, if there's a word called implore, Stop trying to live the Christian life. Just rest in Christ. Stop trying to be a good husband. Just rest in Christ. Stop trying to be a good father, a good mother. Just rest in Christ. Stop trying to do things. Just rest in Christ. And in resting in Christ, you will find that things will happen naturally. Because it's no longer you who live. But Christ will live through you. It will be from Him, through Him. And right back to him. And in humility, he gets all the glory. Let's give Jesus a mighty hand. Praise God. Praise God. That's what's up. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Why? Galatians 2.20 said it. I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. God loves you. He gave his life for you. He reconciles unbelievers to himself, but he also reconciles believers caught in the trap of legalism to himself. Works, works, works. That's what the devil tells us. It's all about works, works, works. But you know what? The work has been finished on the cross. It's done, done, done. And now it's the life of Christ in us. And he's everywhere. He's in the life of Letty, who got up to share her testimony. That those crazy people were not so crazy after all. They just spoke God's truth. They just spoke his grace and unconditional love. God lives in the heart of his people. And it is his heart that pleads out 
be reconciled to me. That's Jesus. And truly, we have to stop trying and just rest in him. And truly, it will be from him, through him, and back to him. Because God deserves all the glory. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. And you gave your son to us. And he gave his life for us, Lord. He is the one, Lord, that transforms us day to day, Lord. It is his life, Lord, that the world needs to see, not our lives. So, Lord, let us sit. Let us rest in you, O oh God. And let Christ just move through our lives, calling back his people to himself. So, Lord, for this, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said a grace filled. Amen and amen. Turn to your neighbor and says, it is not I who live, but Christ in me.